Green button? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're going to call the meeting to order. If everybody wouldn't mind standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do a roll call. Yes. Ms. Webster? Here. Ms. Drumheller? Here. Mr. Denise? Here. Mr. Morrow? Here. And Ms. White? Mr. Renzi, Did she say Renzi? Not yet. Mr. Renzi here. is here now. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right. Uh, Janet, Mr. Renzi is here now also. Oh, okay. Mr. Renzi. Present. Thank you. Thank you. So we don't have any announcements tonight or agenda modifications. Um, so if we could move to number six, the approval of minutes. Everybody look them over. I did. I, I approve that. Um, I move that the minutes be approved as written. Ms. Drumheller has made a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? I second the motion. Mr. Denise has seconded the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, and we're off. Unfinished business. Um, the playground for George Street and Blossom. So what we'd like to do is find out from everybody what they've got. So I'd like to start with Ms. White, because she's at, at um, on Zoom. Joanne? Can you hear me? Yep. Um, I did go through all of the playgrounds styles and layouts, and I picked three, and um, the three that I picked, I can give you their number, of which ones they are, and I think the main reason I picked them was because of the age, they, they are geared for age 5 to 12, and I think if we're going to put a playground up, we should gear for a wide range of ages and not just older kids or younger children. And I like that these three had things to do for all the ages. Do you want me to give you those numbers of the ones I picked? May I, Ms. Webster? Yes, please. Um, so what I would suggest the committee to do is not only give the number, but give the uh, brand, the, the manufacturer. That way, as we're sitting here going through them, we can look it up, whether it's, it's from Schwartz is one company, Playmore is another company, and Game Time is the third company. So just whenever you give us numbers, if you can give the company name as well. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. It looks like all three of the ones I picked were Playmore. Um, I'll give you the numbers. 3501832. The next one was 3502077. And the third one was 3501741. And I based that off of, like I said, there were lots of things to do on that equipment. Some of the other ones seemed like there wasn't much to do. And to me, I really don't care if a playground equipment has a little shelter cover over it or not. Most of them didn't seem that important. But anyway, those are the three I picked. Thank you. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Okay, Mr. Renzi's going. Well, uh, I disagree with Joanne, and I picked uh, for Blossom Street, option one, game time. And for George Street, I also picked uh, game time, option two. A uh, reason being, it affords uh, some shade to the children that are going to be playing under it. There's a large screen above each 
each play area, which I think uh, would be uh, welcome in the uh, summer. So that's my reasoning uh, to pick those two uh, game, games. Thank you. Mr. Renzi, can you just repeat game time blossom option one? Yes. Game time George option two? Yes. Okay, thank you. Only because they have the awnings. Okay, Mr. Mauro. Okay, uh, I agree with Mr. Renzi on Blossom Street Park option number one. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it, it appears from the pictures to uh, provide the most shade to the equipment. Uh, number two, it looks like there's many things to do there. The shade itself, when you look at the structure of the four poles going up, seems to be more sturdy than any of the other shades uh, that we were provided with. Uh, plus the fact that uh, this is for ages two to 12. Uh, and I would suggest that uh, my recommendation would be Blossom Street Park option one for both uh, parks. That's game time. Mr. Um, well, <laughs> sorry, I turn on. For Blossom Street, I also chose um, option one. I, I again really liked the component of the shade. Uh, I think that this, uh, the plastic would do better over years in the sun with the bigger shade. The other uh, ones almost just look like an umbrella that in a thunderstorm could may potentially. Um, turn over. They don't look as sturdy as this rectangular um, shade with uh, the way it's constructed. Um, so I also, for Blossom Street, um, would choose option one. And for George Street um, Park, oh, and that's game time? Is that correct? Game yes. Because um, there's two names on here. Uh, and also for George Street Park, and I go by there all the time, and I just I um, have looked at how this equipment the, that's there, how faded it is, and how really, whether it's winter or summer, the sun is hot. So, uh, and the plastic gets hot too, not as hot as when we were small on our stainless steel stuff at first. But I also chose um, George Street Park option to be. Mr. Denise. Um, I've uh, really looked at a lot of these in discussion with my wife, and at the end, pros and cons, what I'm looking at and what she was looking at, uh, I, I'd like to, I think the game time option one and one is what we're looking for for George Street and for Blossom. What I'm looking for, I shouldn't say we, uh, what I'm looking for, only because the, she said, what's the best company and what's the best value? And I said, Those, that I don't know, but I'm sure Brian has looked at all that. So I really don't have a great preference as long as it's something we could get in a timely manner and it's something that uh, the, the company we could sit there and have replacement with and everything. So this is... You know, I'm not an enthusiast of this to begin with, sir. But if we're picking, I think I would have to uh, look at our discussion, and it's a personal one with my wife, and who often disagrees with me. Uh, but it would be uh, game time uh, option one for each park. Thank you. Um, Ms. Webster, Mr. Denise, so you said game time option one. Which option one, Blossom option one or George Street option one? I, I'm looking at game time, the option, uh, option one and for each one of them. Oh, for each one, okay, so game, uh, Blossom option one and George Street option one. Please. Thank you. And like I said, I'm not, somebody could probably talk me out of it. <laughs> I think we just need to get that in a timely manner and get them in. 
So for me, I, I go with Joanne and the other, everybody else. So I thought for George Street, um, I like 350-1741. And this was um, going through all of them with someone I work with that has children, and I have my granddaughter. Um, George Street is a big park. It's a bigger area. And I felt like, and I think it's a little shaded. Um, so I felt like this would be more, there's more stuff there. There's a lot of stuff there to do. Um, there's a couple of slides and the climbing things. I just, we felt like this was a better option for that size of a park. And then I would agree, I thought that for Blossom Street, this um, option two um, was, was our favorite one overall. Which company for option two I'm sorry, on Blossom? A game time. Game time option two for Blossom? For Blossom. Like, I haven't seen any rock climbing wall at any playground. And I thought that was kind of cool. And it does have some shade. So now, as far as make, making a final determination, um, you know, I think we can, let's go individual park by park first. Um, so we'll start with Blossom. We basically at Blossom have uh, three options, I believe. Let me, Can I say something? Yes, ma'am. Um, my only thought with these, it seems like people are concerned with the sun and kids under the sun. I don't, do, do kids, I mean, are they actually going to be standing much underneath that little tiny sunshade thing, or are they going to be more on the equipment? I guess that's not a big factor to me because I don't see kids under it very much. So that's just, I'm just throwing that out. That was a factor of did it make a difference one way or another? To me, it really didn't because they won't be standing underneath it very long. They'll be out doing all the other stuff. I had actually mentioned to, I think, Brian one time about, you know, once we get the equipment up, is it feasible to even do, you know, coverings over some of these playgrounds? And I know it's expensive and it's a lot of um, pain taking them up and down, but... But anyway, just I guess to me, the little tiny cap on the top wasn't a deal breaker just because I don't see kids standing there very long. They're going to be going up and out and down. So anyway, just that's my comment on that. That was also the shade part of it was also um, brought up to me by the people I work with, the young people with kids, that it's doesn't throw off that much shade that it's not that big a deal. I, for me, I think any playground in Florida in the summertime is awful because it's so hot. You have to get on a slide or something. If we had some way to put shade cloth up, that would be great. I make a comment on that. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that it provides shade for the kids if they happen to want to be in the shade, but it's also shading the equipment. Exactly. You put this metal and plastic out there in the hot sun, it's going to get hot. It's hot. Okay. Yeah. Um, it'll keep the equipment cool. It'll keep the equipment a little bit cool, yeah. Thank you. So in, in, in looking at Blossom, um, and I'm just giving you information. I don't, I'm not trying to determine, make a determination for you. Um, the only concern I have with the shade structure is um, if we start having to take it up and down quite frequently. What happens with those shades is currently at Barber Street, we have them at Creative Playground. Every time we have a hurricane, they come down. And my stance is I don't put those shade structures back up until we're out of hurricane season. Um, because what happens with those is when you have to reinstall it, you have to stretch it again. And the more you stretch it, the more it starts to tear um, 
So, you know, by no means are we have them and they're great products. The shade structures are great. Um, I, that's just another point for you all to consider as well is, you know, having to replace these shade structures. If we get into a situation where we're having to take them up and down frequently, that will be a concern. Um, but I think it, you know, you bring up great points that it's going to create shade for the structure more, sh more so than the kids. Um, but so from Blossom, it looks like uh, total we have uh, three options to choose from. Four options to choose from, I'm sorry. Uh, play more, both of those playgrounds, and both of the playgrounds from game time are the two, are the four options we have. So option one and two, play more, and option one and two, game time for Blossom Street Park for your discussion. Well, I like the option two for uh, Blossom just because I, I like the front wall. I think it's different. Game time, option two is your choice, yes. Ms. Webster? I mean, I'll be, well, I'm happy to you know, go another way if we need to. Seemed everybody liked option two. Are we supposed to vote on this or are we just, are you just so, looking for input? So I will ask the committee to make a recommendation that would go to city council. Um, so I would like a consensus vote from the committee. Um, Actually, we'll go through a voice vote since it does involve money when we're making a recommendation, um, but a recommendation that will go from this board to city council. Does, does somebody want to make the motion? Are you making a motion, Chair, for that? Um, I'm not. I don't think that's what I should be doing, but I'm looking at... Option one is, is a good option also to me. I like the size of the shade for that little part. Um, Can I ask a question on the shade? The shade, uh, what, it, what is the uh, construction of the canopy? What, what's it made out of? It's like metal. It's a, it's a fabric. Um, it's not plastic, it's just a, it's a fabric, it's a woven fabric. I, it's a great shade structure, it's not vinyl, it's just a woven uh, shade structure that it's pretty popular in parks, it's popular for shade structures, shade canopies in most places. And, and what is the life expectancy of that structure? It's just, in, in Florida, it's really hard to give a life expectancy. Um, the elements, the weather, the sun's gonna beat on it, it's gonna take its toll. Once again, when we have to remove them due to hurricanes is when we, basically that's the only time we'll consider removal is when we're expecting hurricane or tropical storm, some of high winds, because they just act like a sail. Once, yeah. you know, the wind gets under them, it's gonna pull them out of the concrete and it's mm -hmm. gonna be a, mm -hmm. a mess. So we remove those, those uh, shade canopies for that, but we would only remove it once for the summer because once it's removed, we're not putting it back up until hurricane season's over. And that's simply because if we put it up and in two weeks from now another one's coming, then that means you have to go take it down. And that fabric, the more you have to stretch it because it, what have, on the ends of those poles are cables. So it's a cable system. Mm -hmm. So you have to attach it to the cable and then you have to tension, tighten down the cable to get it to stretch out and cover and tighten itself up. So the more you have to do that, the more it stretches um, and, and you run into that issue. Yeah. So, I mean, giving you a rough estimate, I mean, the ones that created Playground have probably been around. We just replaced uh, one this year and one, I think, two years ago. They've probably got five to seven years. Uh, and the cost of that, is it uh, expensive? I'm trying to think the ones that created Playground are much bigger than this. And you're looking at a couple thousand dollars. So I would a reasonable estimate for this is probably somewhere in the ballpark of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. 
It's not bad every five to seven years. No. Correct. I mean, it's not. It, it's just something that we have, that I just wanted to bring up and con, you know for consideration. Um, I'm not a fan of the plastic shade structures, the ones where you you know you'll see the eight the kind of A-frame plastic. Those fade. We have them in quite a few of our playgrounds. Mm -hmm. I would re I would voice rec my recommendation on those not to go with those. Um, but these shade structures are fine. Like I said, I just wanted you all to be aware of my concern of take, putting them up, taking them down numerous times just will start to stretch them. So on Blossom Park, can we get a consensus on who wants? You might want to do public input. Okay. Public just input. in case. Any, any public input? Yeah. We should do that now? Yeah. So anybody that wants, has some, wants to speak on this? Playground equipment? No? Anybody on Zoom? No one has raised their hand. Okay. So it seems like I'm just going to try and guide this to somewhere. <laughs> Everybody else is going for Blossom Park. Everybody else is going in the direction of this game time. Is it option one or option two? I think it was option one because it had the better shade structure. The bigger shade the structure? The bigger shade structure, yeah. Everybody's. Uh, I think option two is more like an umbrella. Yes. Yeah. That's option one. That's, option one. That's the one I heard you made. Okay. I would, I would uh, go with that also. Option one on Blossom Street Park. What is the age for that one? What is it, the range? It's two, two to 12, Julian. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, do we need to make a motion for that, Brian? Somebody want to make a motion? The motion being to vote on it. Is that okay? This is the one that we want to send to the council. Well, let me ask, because this is Blossom Street Park option one, do we want to do the same thing for George Street Park? I do not. Okay. And I would rather not, I think we should do variety, something different. Yeah. We should do uh, one park at it. Just when I looked at, for me, I looked at George Street, it's a huge park, it's a big area. It seems like one of these other ones would fit that Take space maybe and you could get more kids playing. And that's just my opinion. But for right now, Blossom. I would suggest that we take a, uh, a tally on Blossom Street for starters. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? Mr. Morrow, are you making a motion? I'll make the motion to go with Game Time Blossom Street Park, option number one. Um, I would second that motion. Mr. Renzi seconded Mr. Morrow's. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now we could address the other. Now we have to go into the next George Street. George Street. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, so for George Street, uh, when I was taking notes, you all kind of came to a consensus. Um, for the most part on two playgrounds. There was 350-1741, which is Playmore. And then there was George Street option two, game time. So this is the three. This is the pl the play more one. Oh. Um, Brian, is that play more? Um, is it stretched out? It looks a lot longer than some of the others. So the like dimension, the dimensions for the play more one for George Street is 30, 36 feet six inches by thirty two feet 
six inches. Yes, seventeen. And it does seem to have quite a, you know, a large um, section of. There is more shade at, at the George Street Park. And this is the option two that everybody else liked? Hmm. On George Street? George Street. Yeah. Option two, you said? Yeah, no. It's the same one. Yeah. So it's this one or this one, right? Yes. For me, I still think the size, because there's so much more to do in that Play World one. Um, <coughs> it's a bigger area. There is shading over there. Just my opinion. There is more shade there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it it can take little kids and big kids and. Uh -huh. So that's that's my take on it. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, Joanne, what do you think about seventeen forty one? Well, that's one of the ones I like just because it seemed more spread out and they're not so congested, and we have the room for it. Yeah. Um, Brian, is what that is the under, Not yet. Um, Brian, what is the under layman? Is that still going to be? What kind of materials are we looking at now? Can't remember. All of our playgrounds will have uh, engineered wood fiber mulch, which is a playground mulch that is certified as ADA accessible. It's the only mulch that's ADA accessible for playgrounds. So, Brian, you think that 1741 would be a good fit in uh, George Street? I do. I mean, um, you know, when, when you look at it, this is really this committee, it, it's your first time going through um, the playground selection in a, in a few years. It's, it, it's probably a good idea to go with two separate companies and, and do these two separate ones. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you got plenty, you can look at it once they're installed, because we're going to be replacing two playgrounds next year and then continuing to go through all of our playgrounds as we move forward. Um, so it's probably a good option to, to look at doing, doing that. And then you have one that it seems to be larger. It seems to have more elements. It does have some shade at George Street. Yeah. Um, and then we can kind of compare them and see how they go forward. Okay. I also think that from resident and community members accessing and using these parks, that all of the parks are within close driving time that if anyone want, finds a certain type of playground that they, their child really enjoys, it's not like it takes them a lot, a long time to get there. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, for this um, 1741, for, for like, you know, the 10 or 11 year olds that may have five and six year old brothers or sisters, they could play on this very easily. And I, I really like, George Street again, a lot of traffic goes by there on Barber Street. So I think that this would be a great placement. And uh, I don't know if we have, I, don't, I haven't seen something like this in our parks that's close to this. Uh, but it would be really interesting for, to get some feedback from, from the residents that utilize it also. Yeah. I felt like this one kind of looks similar to what's there now. Probably it's probably because it has slides. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, I would like to make a motion that we uh, accept uh, 1741 Play World for the George Street Park. I second. Janet, did you get that, or do you need me to tell you? Yes, it was Mr. Morrow who made the motion. No, Mr. Renzi oh, made Mr. the motion. Renzi. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. Uh, Ms. And Ms. Mr. Drumheller seconded it. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 
Joanne? Aye. Okay, everybody's in favor. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Get, they'll get a playground soon at Blossom Park. So now we're at pu public input. Anybody from the public would like to speak? About anything. Will you guys be talking about the garden club today? Um, it's not on the agenda, Brian. Do you have anything? It's I have nothing for this yeah. meeting about it, so public input is the time to speak on it. It's not on the agenda, okay. but you, it, this is public input, so you can talk about whatever you want. Well, I just wanted an update. I know last meeting uh, you guys We just need do We need your name and city of uh, residence. Uh, I'm a resident here in Sebastian, and my name is Miriam Badola. Thank you. Um, like I was saying, I know last time they were... I'm sorry. Excuse me, please spell your last name, please. B as in boy, E-Z-O-L-L-A. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, last time you guys were uh, talking about the park, so I just wanted to know if there was going to be any updates about that. Or will we have to wait till next month? Um, you know, Brian will... I think... I think we're not supposed to be him. We do, there, there's no update at this meeting. It will be listed on a future agenda item. Okay, and before we have a discussion on it, uh, the residents in that immediate area will be notified via a mail out um, in addition to our typical agenda posting that we do through social media website and here at City Hall. Okay, thank you. So keep your eye out. I will. Keep your eye out. Thanks. Anybody else? I was up here before last month. I know you guys didn't mention anything about Garden Club Park. Can you, um, I'm sorry, can you tell them your name? My name? Your name? Mr. Talent. T-A-L-L-A-N-T. -L -L -A -N and I'm not my brother either. So he doesn't <laughs> exist in our lives. So if you heard of okay. that name before, it's Carrie, okay? Okay. All right. Let's get and you that live straight in Sebastian. Real quick. All right. Garden Club Park, okay? I wanted to talk about, but I also have an input on George Street on playgrounds. I know you're talking about mulch and this wheelchair accessible, whatever stuff to get it, you know, accessible for children to be on that playground. For a number of years, playgrounds up and on, up, up and down the 905 corridor, you know, for uh, wet rest stops and stuff, they've been using instead of using mulch all the time, because they have problems with mulch, same problem you guys are having. You're going to go through this again when you have a different council in a different year, the next two years you're going to be replacing these things all the time. Well, what they've done, and they put down, I guess maybe they're two foot by two foot or one by one foot squares of mulch shelf rubber, okay? And it's been put together with a compound to hold it in that square and they just lay it down. It's very soft. You can take a concussion. It will not hurt you. And they're doing all the playgrounds up and down the 95 corridor all the way to D.C. I got the names of the companies and stuff like that on pieces of paper at the house on my desk. I forgot to bring them because I didn't think we'd be talking about the mulch at this aspect of uh, that. I didn't think so. Um, but anyway, I can get that information to you. If you want to check it out, if Brian wants to check it out. You know, mulch you have to replace all the time. This you ain't got to replace. It's a cost-effective cost material. And seeing as being a taxpayer of this city, I think it'd be a good who of y'all to think about it. All right? Because I'm looking at your finances. All right? I just want to let you know that. And I asked, and there's, not, there's another question I have. I asked a question, you guys, last month, and I wanted to see it here today. And I, obviously, I didn't get greeted with it. I'm probably not going to. And that is a, I asked Brian for the numbers on what it takes, what it took for the last five years Maybe the last 10 years. I go back 10 years. I, I wanted the last five years of the numbers on what it took to take care of, you know, landscape, Garden Club Park, okay? Especially the backside. I obviously don't have those numbers here today, so I'm going to have to invoke my, my right, which is the, um, uh, hell, I can't even remember that now. I'm getting too old. But, you know, um, 
Hell, what the hell you call that thing? I'm sorry. Um, Freedom of Information Act. Okay? I got a lot going through my mind. I just went closing on my house. I got a lot of things going on. But the Freedom of Information Act, I will invoke on this. And these numbers are open to the public, and I will get them. Because I asked you guys for them last time, and I didn't get them. I so obviously don't have them. Not okay. to make excuses, sir. I, I think that uh, uh, hopefully you understand we're not even at a point close to doing anything on this. Uh, this is still in discussion. Yeah, I know. So but I need we to don't get have, we to don't have those numbers. I need either. to get my information to you after I get those numbers because I don't know who's on the speaker, okay, or multiple people's on that speaker. I don't know who they are, but they keep speaking up in y'all's meeting. Um, Seems like that person up there has an agenda for that backside part, okay, from the last meeting from what I heard. She has a 10-year plan. Well, we're putting the brakes at 10-year plan. And so I get some numbers and get some figures on this part so I can tell you how to take care of it, okay? And I know none of y'all live on that part, okay? And, and, and your guy mowed it this week, left it a mess, for one, to let you know that, Brian. Left it a mess. If you're going to leave your stakes out there, to border that park after you did your survey, if you're going to leave them, weed eat around them. All right? You left them this week with grass all around your side of that stake in the center of my yard. But yet you go down to the other side where somebody had their stake for a survey because they just sold their lot. Y'all decided to put your stake right next to theirs because it's the same line. You put my stake, your stake in the middle of my yard. So when my guys go down and mow and keep my easement clean, Y'all don't keep your easement clean. If I have to get out there to weed whacker, I will. Matter of fact, when I go home tonight, that stake's coming up. You won't have a survey on my side. Guarantee you that if you don't take care of it. That's another little whim I wanted to add in there. All right? Now, by the time you have another meeting on Parks and Recs, I'll either have that information on the Freedom of Information Act or you will have it here for me. So I can do my work as a resident on that park because there's no other park and i'll say this again there's no other park in this city that's right up against people's property all right y'all get on with y'all's meeting have a nice night thanks thank you can we can we speak to him and you know i'm here but i don't see her Okay, so we have uh, any public input on Zoom? There is no one. All right, so we're going to get out of public input and on to new business. Um, community member recognition program. Madam Chair, um, so this was an item that was brought forward by Mr. Denise um, a, a two meetings ago. So... Um, in June, I'm trying to count my, my months backwards. Uh, in June, it was brought up by Mr. Denise, and um, I was not prepared for it. In, in July, we had a, a larger meeting, and was uh, so I pushed it off to this one. In your agenda packet, there um, I included the meeting minutes from the June 28th meeting, um, which included the information that was provided by Mr. Denise and the direction from the committee to bring it back for discussion. Um, and then also in there is an email I received from Mr. Denise on July 12th um, in regards to his thoughts for the program and for discussion points for the July meeting is what he referenced it for. But since it was not on the agenda, I um, included it for this meeting for August. Um, so, you know, in, in looking at it, I'm looking a little bit for some direction from the committee and how you would really like to see this proceed. Um, there's a couple ways we can look at it as to, um, you know, our committee members nominating. Are we going to allow the, communi the community to nominate people? Are we going to award one a year, one a quarter? Um, you know, are we going to award them certificates? Are we going to recognize them at our Parks and Rec meeting? Um, at this time, I would suggest to the committee that let's just contain the discussion to Parks and Rec committee. I know there was some discussion at a previous meeting that it could go and include other committees at this time i think you know our 
decisions here pertain specifically to Parks and Rec, and if it's a successful program, then I can see it being implemented across other committees. But I'd like for us to make sure we you know, concentrate on our committee and, and taking it forward if that's something that the committee decides tonight or if you want me to do further research and bring it back for a final decision at another meeting, we can do that as well. But I would open it up. I know it was Mr. Denise's item um, for his discussion and then the committee to discuss. <coughs> Am I supposed to? Yes, Mr. Denise. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you have to excuse me. I've had a challenging day today and I'm not with it. But uh, I think if you have my uh, email to Brian, I think I spell it out uh, in there. I, I'd personally like to see more people at these meetings than we have. And uh, I think the way to do it from past experience that I've had with associations is through recognition. I also know there's a challenge with that because I think that sometimes we recognize people or things that aren't that important. I think when I say recognizing people, I think service is an important thing in life. And I think it's something that most of us are older, so we appreciate it probably more than uh, other people do. But I think it's, it's something that we, we want to try to encourage our community to give service to. And I'm, in the back of my head, I also have concerns as, as our city grows, are we capable enough that we just keep throwing dollars at something as a solution when maybe we could have the community helping us with it. And I think the only way you're going to get the community to help us is that if you recognize people in the com community and recognize people on the boards. Um, I had, I, I was telling Brian before, some 50 years ago, I was a young man, like the young man next to me uh, when he's here on the War Memorial Board in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, and uh, working and cleaning the, during the parks. I, I coached the basketball team in those days on there, and cleaning up a field and uh, and these were all volunteers. This is Danbury, Connecticut, which has uh, their own parks, erection, and everything. In those days, we handled most of it in the War Memorial. Well, this past week, uh, a baseball field that we could cut out for the older kids that are getting ready to go to college and everything, for the last 20 years, they've been running uh, college summer programs there and they have the all-stars from all the colleges in New England play around there. They play in Massachusetts and New York, you know, Cape Cod. And that Danbury, for the first time in 20-some years, won the uh, championship of that league, that baseball league. And I had a grandson uh, who plays for Manhattan College, was on that team and one of the all-stars for that team. So I think the reward sometimes comes, in my case, it came some 50 years uh, later, but it's a special feeling. And I just believe that people are willing to give if we ask them, number one, and I think we can't be afraid to ask somebody like, for instance, in this park, um, you know, people to help us besides uh, the city paying for projects, uh, if we can get assistance, and if they do, if we recognize them. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is something I just feel that uh, I've been on boards before, uh, truthfully, some people tell you the problem of having me on the 
board of directors and different organizations because the meetings went on too long because he comes up with too many ideas. But if we're going to give our time, you know, we can't do it and we should get as much of the community involved. And that's my personal opinion and that's why I brought that up. And I think it's a worthwhile program. But I think that we've got to formulate how we set it up. I agree, uh, you know, don't, don't, let's not go outside of the park and rec. I know this on the police department, what they're doing. So there's other people doing it. When you look at the um, Facebook page for this city, but let's stay with, you know, what we're doing and let's see if we can get help. Um, the, the downside is our meetings will probably go a little longer uh, because people are going to, you know, be presenting different ideas to us and we're going to, you know, have to decide that we want to do this or not. Thank you. So I think for me, I think it's a great idea to have a community member recognition program. I think that you'd have to narrow down the criteria and, and all that, but I, I like it. Mr. Renzi. So, uh, are we talking about uh, recognizing uh, particular coaches or outstanding players, that type of thing? I wasn't thinking about players. Uh, coaches, should they be included? I, I definitely think so. Uh, my own bias for coaching over 50 years, I think they're special yeah. people. But uh, how about people in the community that, you know, like gardening? I mean, we have a boys and girls club next door uh, that's been participating part of the community. Uh, we have uh, uh, Friends of Tennis uh, group there that do a lot of work on that uh, facilities there and I think this is things that we have to consider and there's that's the problem is I don't know who these people are. I think you know, between us, we're going to know how to add a few more people to it. But that's what, who we should come up. Who do we recognize? I don't know. But anybody, you know, I don't think they have to be somebody working for the city or working. And, and I do think people working for a city that go above and beyond should be included. I don't know if we should leave anybody out, mm -hmm. but I think it should stay park and rec and not. Well, maybe we could do a, like a, a research. Yeah, like well, like send out to an email or whatever to friends of tennis, little league, um, the football, the city to see who, for applicants or you know somebody who they would put up suggestions. Yes, yeah, recommendations, mm -hmm. and then we could read all about them, and then make a decision. Yes. Um, I have a couple. I, I love this type of a program, and I, I think that the the base core has to happen first. Is and, and I think as a committee and with Brian's advice, is to, we need to know what are elements that are easily done by volunteers that aren't going to require more oversight from the employees, um, as well as before you send an email out to all these folks, we need to have a list of what we want to ask for. So I think that, that those elements have to be discussed and collated and agreed upon before you can go. Um, I think the volunteer uh, program recognition is like, you know, four or five levels up from where you start. Um, but, I do, but I do think that uh, the parks and recreation workers should be recognized. I, I don't, do you have, is there an internal mechanism of recognition at this time in, within parks and rec? So we, we, we do have a system um, through our human resources department that, you know, when someone goes above and beyond, um, then th there is the opportunity for um, rewards, I guess you could call them. Um, also, we, you know, frequently we get letters from the public and they go into the employee's file and it's included in their evaluations on an annual basis. So that 
information there. But as far as um, you know, formal recognition, it's, it's typically each quarter the Human Resources Department will allocate certain rewards to employees of the quarter type situation. But department. that's citywide, that's not within Parks and Rec, correct? Correct. So, um, I mean, you, your department with all of the parks and all of the things going on in this community really, to, to me, I'd love to start doing a quarterly recognition for um, some of the guys that I see out six o'clock every morning, they're like clockwork, picking up stuff and making sure that it's safe and making sure that uh, those areas that you're working on still have the tape that no one took that took that off overnight. Um, so for for workers, I think it's an easier implement than for volunteers because I, I think we need to start at a lower level. like what do we what do we want to reward? Well, first we need volunteers, and this is what I'm saying, and we need people, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one that just doesn't think, I'm not smart enough, I don't know what all the questions should be asked, never mind what the answers are. But I don't think you I can think ask for volunteers if you're not, if, if you won't get a whole bunch of people responding for a volunteer request if they don't know what they're volunteering for. That, that's, that's my issue, is we need to know right, what, well, what is it that we want them to do. To do. I don't know that we have anything. I mean, I would say, you know, and I, I think this might be where Mr. Denise is going with this, and you tell me if I'm incorrect on this, is that, you know, we can reach out. We can reach out, obviously, from the city standpoint, via email, social media, reach out to the volunteer organizations that we have within the city that either have, for instance, the Friends of um, Tennis that take place at Schumann. Well, that's a recreational activity that has a lot of volunteers. Um, Little League is a recreational program with a lot of volunteers. Football and cheerleading, same thing. Um, so you reach out to those organizations and have people nominate people. Who do you think, you know, is the volunteer of the year from Little League that can be considered? Or maybe it's a coach, maybe it's, you know, a group of parents that are really happy with their coach and they want to nominate them for the, for the award. If we do it an annual award or quarterly, however, is decided. I mean, I would start small to begin with. Let's don't go out there and want to do one every month. I would say we start small, and then if we see a, you know, a lot of applications coming in on an annual basis and it's really hard to make the decision, then we could go to more of a quarterly or, or semi-annual type thing. Um, but I think, it, is that correct, Mr. Denise, that you're looking to recognize someone in the community, not so much, um, obviously, you know, volunteers for the Clam Bake Shrimp Fest those types of groups can, can nominate people, people who go above and beyond for those organizations as well for their recreational activities, mm -hmm. not for um, you know, the Lions Club or uh, the Rotary and, and all those groups, not for just their normal activities, but for their benefit to the community for what they do for those special events that we have. Um, that would be how I'd see this program going. I think those are your key components that we have um, are our special events and then our athletics, um, volunteer opportunities. And then, you know, if we, I know we have, you know, a garden, garden group that helps at Hardy Park with that. And then hopefully we can get some garden people at Garden Club Park um, and start that. And then they can start to nominate someone and um, start to go down that pathway with it would be my recommendation as far as a volunteer level. Instead of saying, you know, come out and volunteer and help us out and you'll be possibly nominated for this, let right. the public nominate people for the award. That's what, I, them go that's with what I thought. Like they used to do man and woman of the year here and people would fill out a form or whatever and, and talk about the person that's nom or nominate somebody. And then I, I would think that we would get together and Pick something. I don't know how we do that. Well, an example of uh, uh, that, it's not today because they're no longer here, but for years taking uh, teams around the country at the World Scholar Athlete, Athlete Games, uh, there would be people wanting to know, do you have something from Hales? Hales used to give uh, the tennis team uh, all the times, gifts that we, because we gave gifts to all the other teams that were there. So every time 
you played somebody, you gave them a good. And they look forward to that. And that was a big thing for us. So we don't, they don't exist, so I, that's the reason I <laughs> mention them, because there's nothing to give them now, because there is no company. But that kind of stuff, if there was, I would have, you know, nominated them for uh, an award if we had such a thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think if it's something that the committee wants to do, I think we really have to start to narrow down on what the parameters are going to be and then make a decision, you know, how we're really going to go forward with this. Um, I mean, if, if you all would like, I can start to put some things together and just send them out to the committee via email and, and have it ready for the next meeting with some questions that could potentially be included. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say you need to fill this application out. You know, I think it would be something where we kind of have the framework for how people nominate someone. And then it's up to the person that nominates them as to how detailed they go into. I mean, I know when you look at youth athletics, you know, if parents or um, even coaches, whether it's a board member or a coach, is someone that goes above and beyond, they're going to be able to get their story across. And that's what we need to allow them to do. We don't, you know, I'm not a, I, I don't like to just say, here, here's the survey, fill this out for us, and we direct them. I want people to give us the story of the person that they're nominating. I think that tells a lot about the person, and it also, you know, gives them a chance to sell the committee on, on the volunteer. I like I like the community service recognition. I think that should be a nomination through your department, Parks and Rec. Unless you have another name, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, like you say, when you get these nominations, if you want to give them to this committee to review, and then we can make suggestions or recommendations back to you. Um, and then I think uh, um, any, any award of this recognition should be done at a city council meeting. It should be done by the mayor. I mean, not by us. It's just something that we, that we, uh, we look at we agree with, and we're pushing it up the, up the chain and say, yeah, we think this person should be recognized. And give them a certificate. But it would be nice that if we had them come to our, to us and we could present it to them, then they could go see city council afterwards. But we yeah. should be able to make a big deal of it and get people coming in. Yeah, people coming right? in. That's the... Yeah. So for me, I would like to see you do what you said you were, could do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so let, I'll put some thought and, and effort into it now that the committee is, is ready to kind of go forward with it, and, um, and I'll, I'll try to look around and see what's done elsewhere. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of volunteer recognition programs, but this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be specifically choosing someone. Um, that would be kind of our community service in it. And I, I, my opinion is we always stick with the volunteers because, you know, I don't agree with, you know, us recognizing someone who's getting paid for it. So, you know, all of our volunteer organizations would be eligible for nominations of, of someone and, and go from that standpoint. Fantastic. Joanne, are you still there? Yes, I am. And I'm agreeing with everything that Brian said. I'm just thinking maybe twice a year we might want to try it. Um, but I think it's a good idea. I think people do need to be recognized. So I'm, I'm for this, yes. Okay. Okay. So I have my um, kind of direction from you all on, on what you would like to see, and, and I'll bring it back um, at a future meeting. Thank you. All right. So current project updates. So I'll keep it short tonight. Um, We've, we've been able to finish quite a few projects as we've been moving along th this year, and I'm really proud of what our staff has been able to do. It, it, they're the ones that get out there and, and do the work. Um, and it's not just our, my department. You know, I get a lot of help from other departments within the city, and it's one of the things whenever I talk to people across the state and other uh, recreation parks departments that, um, you know, this city works well together, whether, I, you know, stormwater, we help stormwater, stormwater work helps us, public works. So I, I'm proud of that and I'm proud of you know all the workers here in Sebastian 
all of our staff members that work together really well and, and, and come together. So with that help, we've been able to get a lot accomplished this year. We're coming towards the end of our fiscal year, which means our, our spending is starting to dwindle a little bit and we'll, we'll start back up in October. Um, but a couple things we've got still going on is the Yacht Club Seawall. I don't have an update um, on that currently. It's currently in the permitting process with DEP. Uh, we knew going into it that permit process was gonna take two to three months. Um, so we're well into that, that timeline. Um, so I, we should anticipate to hear something within the next month or so. Uh, the splash pad is one of those projects, as I was just speaking, that uh, involves numerous people from numerous departments. Um, we've got the building department, um, facilities department, public works department, stormwater department, um, my guys here in leisure services, and um, you know they, they've all come together and that project's been going on. We closed this, the splash pad down a couple weeks ago. We've replaced all of the piping from the pump feature to the holding tank. All of that's been replaced. Um, we went through and ran it, or the guys went through and ran a test on Friday while I was out and, and everything seemed, to, they didn't find any leaks in that portion. Um, what they started today was removing concrete out of the actual splash pad. They went through and cut a large section out um, and started digging up the drainage piping. And we're gonna reconfigure it. We're not gonna go and remove all the drainage piping that's underneath the system um, because it would have involved cutting a large area of the splash pad out. So we just went through and cut a straight line. We're gonna remove everything that's there for drainage and we're gonna install all new drainage with PVC piping. Um, we'll go in and, and we're hoping that that solves our, our water loss issue. Um, so that's, that's our next step. That I know the guys removed all the concrete today that was gone and they started digging up the pipes um, to remove the existing ones and, and we'll move forward with that. So um, yeah, I don't wanna give a timetable. I, I tell people when they call and our staff gives them the information, we don't have a timeline on this. Um, if we get a lot of rain in the near future, it's gonna keep continue to push us back because all that groundwater there on, on the riverfront the water table is really high, so we were pumping nonstop um, in every hole we're digging right now, we're having to pump water out. So that hopefully, you know, in the coming weeks, we're able to finalize that project, but that's one that, that's a big one. Um, park signage, the sign contractor is in town this week. They are installing uh, no park signs, but we are having them install um, some of our gateway signage, which is uh, Barber Street and US-1, Schumann and US-1, 66th Avenue, um, and then the Rotary Club actually purchased a new sign that would match ours to go over their Rotary Boardwalk. Um, so that one will be arriving this week as well. And uh, the last thing I know, we had a couple residents come in tonight about Garden Club Park. I am, um, you know, in, in looking at it, it it's, it's just taking, it's gonna take me time to get everything put together. Um, and I know it's something that the committee, you all, you know, want to have the discussion, but it's not something that's, that's on the very forefront. We've got other projects that have been in front of that one. So we'll, I'll continue to work through the numbers and get things figured out. Um, before we have a discussion of it, we are going to notify the residents in the area. Um, I think that's the best case situation in this one. And the next time that we discuss it, we will do a mail out to all those residents. Um, informing them of the time of the meeting so they can come and, and, and voice their concerns or their support um, for the project or any projects that we're looking to do in that park. Um, you know, the one misnomer I think that gets out there is, well, they're doing this, they're doing that. Well, we haven't decided to do anything yet at this time. We're just kind of considering all of our options on improving the park. And, um, you know, the city owns the property. So we can, you know, go forward with that and we'll have that discussion in a future meeting. So with that, that's my update on all of our current projects. Fantastic, thanks Brian. Okay, committee members, let's let's start with um, Ms. White. Um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I really don't have any concerns. I just wanted to say when I was in town, I did go to the dog park the new grass in there looks great. I mean, it, it, it is a really nice dog park. And um, I did go 
to uh, and the fountain there in the lake is huge and it's just it the park is looking really good for where it's at right now so garden park is doing really well um, and that's about all I have so good job Brian for getting those things done thanks Joanne mr. Denise mm -hmm. Uh, I would just say I left uh, Florida Tennis Magazine uh, for everybody uh, for two reasons. I um, I left some notes for Brian that we could discuss another time. There's a lot of things happening, and our city is growing, and I think we have to look at not just I mean we we're blessed to have Brian and the group there because. I'm in the parks walking all the time, and it's just beautiful, and the people, like you said before, are always uh, ready to help out uh, and, and keep it beautiful. But I think we do have to be cognizant of the growth of our city. Uh, we have to anticipate where it's going to go. And at this time, uh, the USTA for one, is looking to sit there and support. And rather than supporting what old coaches like they used to be, uh, I was lucky when I got into the business because we developed the business. They're looking to, to make partnership with cities and towns and everything. So I'm just trying to keep you abreast there. And saying that, too, if you go online, uh, <clears throat> in Schenectady, New York, uh, the last two days, um, one of the most beautiful city places, that was a big tournament with a lot of people playing on the pro today. Um, you will see pictures of it, and it looks like a disaster area. So there's pros and cons <laughs> working at it. So in Florida Tennis Magazine, they're going to paint one picture. But if you go online, uh, the, 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 the last two days, uh, a lot of us old coaches are very <laughs> saying, how can this happen? Uh, so, you know, but we do have to consider where we're going to be 10 years from now. And, uh, and I think that's... If we can help Brian, that's going to be the big thing. Okay. Mr. Renzi. Uh, just uh, one point, that picture that I passed out before, that's, uh, is there anything that could be done about that? There's a dangerous situation. There's a lot of people that walk dogs over there. That baby was right out there. Yeah, I mean, we'll take a look, and we'll, I'll have staff I mean, when they're out there in that area keeping an eye out for it. Um, it's hard to go out and start searching for it at this time, but if they happen to come across it, we typically do remove um, anything of that nature that yeah. we find. Yeah, okay. Very good. Very and, good. and the public can call us as well. I know it mentioned that they called the police, not emergency number. I didn't see the citizen uh, inquiry come through um, my department, so I'm not sure exactly who they would have sent, who they sent it to. Um, but typically, people can call City Hall, call the police, not emergency, and then either dispatch or a staff member here at City Hall will get in touch with one of us and we can immediately go out there. That's, that's really the best course of action for the public um, is when you see, um, for instance, you know, a rattlesnake or, or anything that you deem as dangerous, um, then call us, let us know. We'll send someone out there to look at it. You know, a frequent one that, that we get is gators. Um, however, you know, we can't do the removal. It has to come through FWC. So typically what we do from a staffing standpoint is we go out and observe it ourselves. This snake is a different situation. We would have it, we would remove it. Um, but gators, we go out and observe them. They're, you know, if they're in a natural area and they're not a, and they're not approaching people, then typically we let them go and, and kind of see what happens from that standpoint. But the moment they start to approach people on the bank, that's when FWC comes in with a trapper. Uh -huh. But that's for, you know, animals and anything dangerous like that, they can call City Hall or police not emergency and we'll get someone out there immediately. Okay, very good, yes, thank sir. you. Ms. Drummiller? Um, I have two things, one for in relation to the uh, Sebastian Garden Club. They do have a very active Facebook page and there was a plan to uh, have a meeting at the Garden Park 
Um, but Fred was coming through and it got canceled because we had a rainy day, but they were going to do a um, exchange. You know, everyone was going to bring flowers or plants that they wanted to do an exchange with. So it seems like there's more activity. They're wanting to start meeting up again. So if you are on Facebook, if you look, search for Sebastian Garden Club and send them a request, they, you can see kind of what's going on. But just in the last three or four months, I've seen a lot of activity on that page and people indicating they want to get organized. So I think that's interesting. Um, the other thing that I've been reading on social media is a lot of bad press for your department about the Yacht Club seawall. Um, and I think part of that is related to the uh, them not understanding that it, you can't just go out and do anything there, that it has to go through permitting. So I don't know, it, it may be worth a little post somewhere um, on the Sebastian site or something that it's awaiting permitting. Um, and that that takes time, that the, that the city really, we don't want it to get worse either. Um, but people are in the moment, as you know. And so I read some of this stuff and I really try to divert it and say, well, you know, it's, it's known. And uh, also I heard someone yelling. I walk there a lot too. And um, there was just someone having a conversation about how, what a terrible job um, Sebastian does on keeping that dock where you put the boats in, you know, that they're hitting on the side and there's nails all the time, but they're hitting. <laughs> there's a little bit of user error when boats go in. Um, I don't know if it's worthy of some type of uh, signage, you know, at your own risk or whatever, but they get pretty ticked off about it there. Yeah, so just to address, you know, both of those items, the um, Yacht Club Seawall, on social media, I mean, at any time or if anyone approaches any of you all, you can gladly give them my office number and I'll speak with the people. I mean, I don't, I, I'll provide updates. We'll work on getting something put together to put out on our social media page as well to see if we can get the information out there and, um, you know, I can even see if, you know, Sebastian Daly or if one of the newspapers wants to try to get information out there. Unfortunately, it is just the nature of this permitting process. It happens for every single project, whether it's a government project, private project, um, you know, th those projects are, the permitting pro process takes a while. Um, and this is, anytime you're doing anything on the waterway, in the lagoon, there's a lot of permitting and, and everything has to be reviewed by the Army Corps of Engineers, Department of Environmental Protection. Um, so that, that's really what holds, up, holds us up on that one. Um, in regards to the boat ramp, uh, it's a never-ending battle. Um, a couple of things, people, when they come up, they seem to like to use the pilings as their stopping mechanism <laughs> um, instead of, you know, bringing your boat up and, and docking up next to the pilings. They think, you know, the pilings are there to stop their boat. And when that happens, they ram it and it starts to knock. You know, we've, we've tried numerous um, different things to cover up on those pilings, the bolts and um, everything we put on there, they break. Uh, we tried rubber. We have put uh, the most recent one was the wood bollards that we installed out there, um, and it's just it really is from people just coming in and they they hit they hit them. I sit there and watch it. Uh, same thing with our ladders. We've replaced the ladder Main Street boat ramp on the south side. We we put signage up that said please do not tie your boat to the ladder, and we had to replace that ladder three times in the last month. Um, of people either pulling in and hitting it or tying up to it. And what happens is it just breaks the welds on it and uh, there's nothing we can do. So we, it's a never ending battle. Um, and it, it is unfortunate because we have many boaters who um, know how to use the boat ramps and the docks. And, you know, sometimes, you know, they come in and they see the condition of it, but um, it's just, it's kind of one of those things that happens, but we'll continue to work on it and, and see what we can do to make it better. Mr. Morrow, nothing for you today? I mean, I would suggest boating lessons, maybe. <laughs> um, Little League is signing up, I believe, for fall ball. Um, I was going to tell you something. Now, if, if some, a member from, of the public comes in and they want, they want records, they have to go to the city to get those records. Is that correct? 
So there's a citizen request. Um, they can request public, they can do a public records request. Um, it's a pretty simple process. It goes to our clerk's office and then the clerk's office goes to the individual department and we provide the information that's requested. Fantastic. Um, that can, that's a way that public can get, pub, it's a public records request uh, that goes through. Um, we're transparent. Everything we do is, is public knowledge. We're not hiding anything. Nope, I know. Um, I so. just think they should know because we don't have the records. Yeah, they can, yeah, they can they, do a public records request through the clerk's office. Okay, thank you. Everything's going great, so thank you. Thank you very much, and that's it. I guess our next meeting will be September 27th. If that is it, we're going to adjourn this meeting. <laughs>